hit the recording. Okay, so this is our Empathy Circle work group, and uh, Leona uh, is going to be talking about Empathy Circles in Australia. Take it away. Leona. Thanks. Thanks, Edwin. Um, so I, I'll keep this brief because we're coming towards the end of our time. So I just wanted to speak to um, building empathy circles, and one way that we're trying in Australia is building them on the back of a training. So we've done a lot of Regen 101 training in Extinction Rebellion here. And it's like a taster plate of, you know, the earth emotions, intersectionality and community and groups, self-care and action care. And after each module, we're offering empathy circles around those modules so people can deepen their understanding and self-awareness and experience around those. So that's one way we're, we're doing it. Um, we want to we want to launch the principles down under in our Oceania time zone. Just mm -hmm. flagging that up. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm curious about doing pre circles before things like participatory democracy events, because what I've noticed about empathy circles is, well, my experience is it really brings some clarity. It deepens my clarity around an issue. And it deepens because A, I sense more nuanced angles of it for myself, but also I'm listening to other people and getting other points of view. And that's really helping me understand the broader picture of whatever is coming up. So there's another thought around empathy circles. Um, uh, what else? Oh, one of the things that comes up is in, and I'm new to this, so um, when reflections are offered, they can be long. And so the speaker has five minutes, mm -hmm. two and a half minutes of it, someone mm -hmm. really trying to reflect everything, right? Really working so hard as the listener. And sometimes I know for myself in that efforting, I miss the essence of what they're really trying to say, the kind of beautiful crux and that's often very few words often the metaphor of what they're using to describe their experience rather than all of the content they wrap that little seed of their experience up in and so I'm curious not necessarily today at some point in how to bring that quality of just the crux going back to the person and then they can add more or say yeah that, that got basically got it um, that's it. That was where a big burst of energy there, just to cram it all in before we wrap up. Mm. Um, and happy to have some feedback about any of those. Bill. So one of the things in the uh, the um, people's assembly and a lot of them are very similar to the empathy circle. And so one thing you might do is try instead of having like a pre circle and another uh, process embedded in the because they have breakout rooms. And so you can say, when you go to your breakout rooms, let's do a quick empathic check-in. So that was one suggestion that mm -hmm. might, you know. And then the other thing I have about uh, reflection, and this is in the facilitator's training, like one of the things that I do, once I'm comfortable with it, I try to keep my reflection to half the time of the speaker. And it's not a hard and fast rule, but if I'm going over, I kind of realize it and I try to wrap up. That's yeah. it. I wasn't tracking all the fingers, but I think it's Lou next. Um, yeah, I would just add, I mean, this is kind of what Bill said, but um, I wasn't sure if he meant this exactly, that the, you, you, uh, in terms of pre-circles or having people share with each other to increase clarity, in a larger group setting, you could have people break into pairs to do that, or threes, mm -hmm. and you know, take a minute each. It's kind of... Um, there's a teaching practice, or there's a practice in teaching called think, pair, share, mm -hmm. where the student thinks, the, the instructor gives a question, the student thinks about it, then they pair with someone and they share, mm -hmm. and, then in, and then sharing happens in the whole group. And it's a, it could be a similar kind of thing with mm -hmm. empathy circles, and it primes the person to figure out what it is that they might want to say. Um, and I have, in terms of, people sharing for too long. I have not very often because I try not, I try mostly to teach people about a reflection by my modeling it mm -hmm. in the circle. So I think the facilitator has a lot of power by how they demonstrate modeling. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm careful not to include every little detail, you know, or, you know, be short. But I have occasionally said to the group, if I see that happening a lot, say like, you know, just be mindful that your reflection should not be as long as the person who's sharing, you know, or, yeah, so, or more. <laughs> Sometimes reflection can take up more time than the person <laughs> who is speaking. Edwin. Yeah, um, go, go through a couple of things. One, the 10 principles, great idea. I thought we should, it could be sort of an ongoing rolling prompt thing, you know, one for this time, for the UK, America time zones, uh, something for the, you know, Asia, Australia. So I'm really excited, glad to support, you know, glad to talk to you about that, to promote it. We could even, we could even tack it on to the existing uh, event, you know, so then it's already spread out and it's just on the exact exact existing Facebook event, which is already, you know, shared in a lot of places. So it could help with the promotion of it. So glad to talk to you about that. Uh, in terms of the reflections, sometimes, yeah, just reflecting the felt, the feeling, and maybe the underlying need that the person has just a couple of words and the person feels totally understood. So, but that's like a whole training for people to get better at it. And yeah, so it is kind of challenging. How do you just get concise reflections, kind of leave it, been leaving it open. Yeah, so those are just two things that came to mind. Marta? First, I want to celebrate all you're doing. It was lovely taking part in the Earth Emotions one. Um, and then the other thing is, yeah, I, I for sure reflect super long at times and other times I manage to get it just, you know, and I find it's good to correct in others. If, you know, like Lou was saying, mm -hmm. if, if it comes up, I know for me, I, my brain is not equally fresh every day or every time of the day yeah. or every um and so i just wanted to say that 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 also affects how mm. much you manage to get the you know like there's <laughs> moments where you're like super hyper aware and you get that thing that the person meant and you're very on it and there's moments where you're just trying to wrap your head around it and i just wanted to acknowledge that we don't always have full control mm. over that in, in a way, because we're not always super alert at the same level. Yeah, thanks, Linda. Caro. Uh, I just want to add something as English is not my uh, native language, it's my second language. And uh, sometimes for people like me, it's very difficult mm -hmm. uh, to reflect and actually to understand what somebody's saying because of bad connection or somebody's pronunciation. There is a lot of such uh, uh, factors. And it's really challenging to be short, but I want to recall uh, a situation I had, I was participating, actually it was, I think it was with people, we had circle with people in, from Canada and there was participants. I was talking, 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 talking. I pause and he said one sentence. And it was uh, quite good, but I felt a little bit strange with that. Yeah. Somehow incomplete. Yeah. It, it was accurate, but s did I suggest this, nothing else? Mm -hmm. So this is the, the example of something opposite, you know? I, I agree that reflection shouldn't be long uh, as speak, speech, but if it's too short, it's kind of uncomfortable. At least for me, it was kind of strange. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's something there about too short feels like you served half a meal. <laughs> you know, you've, you've looked at the menu and picked something and they've just given you back just the vegetables. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that it was. 
yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's a really good point to in getting the essence is really trying to capture the whole of it without taking the whole time they took to share it. Yeah. Um, I see Ben. 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 Wanted, yeah. yeah, so I think it's inevitable that the personality of the person who's reflecting will come through to some degree in the reflection. Um, and I think it's a matter of degree. Um, I, I don't have a solution of how to deal with that. I think of talking about length in terms of sentences seems like quite an arbitrary solution. Um, and it might not completely solve the problem. Um, but um, yeah, that, that's where I've got to with this. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I, I feel complete. Okay, I'm just putting the link into the uh, Google Doc, if you can copy that. And if you haven't added your name and contact info there, just so we can I had connect impress with each other. Yep. Oh, I'm gonna I stop had recording. No, no, no. I had the impression that Divya wanted to say something. No? Okay.